Hey guys, welcome to another Martin with Drone Buzz video. Uh, in this video, I'm going to cover how to register a drone in uh, the Transport Canada uh, drone portal. So uh, I'm going to put the link on how to get there in the notes so you can look at it. And I'll go over how to register a drone that's, um, that you bought from the store or how to register a drone that uh, you've bought yourself or register a drone that you bought but it's actually not in uh, Transport Canada registry of drones so here's how it works this is the page you go to i'll have the link below and then from there you have two ways to log in you can log in through the gc key or the sign in partner so i recommend you get a gc key you probably have one if you've done taxes online before and uh, all you have to do is log in with that so you can use sign in partner but it's easier with gc key so i'll quickly log in and then it also tells you last time you logged in into the portal uh, Go okay, I was there not too long ago. And then once you're there, you have two kinds of accounts you can have for the um, your Transport Canada access. So right here, this is my business account. And then the business account is actually a simpler account. And you can do two things. One is you can register your drone right to your business account, uh, or you can go and view your drones in your uh, personal account, in your um, business account. So that's the things you can do with both accounts, personal and business, is that you can register a drone. Everything else is different. So for example, in the business one here, you can invite others. Uh, the, the point is that if you have more than one pilot in your company, you can have them have, have access to be able to control things, remove drones, add drones and all this stuff. Uh, so it's pretty easy. If you invite a person, you put in their information right here. You can either give them two kinds of access, full access or drone registration uh, only access. So that's if you have someone that's lots of admin for you, then they can come in to the admin side of it. And then, so this is pretty much it for the uh, business side of the drone account. If you go to your personal account, which I recommend you're probably gonna do a personal one first and then a business one, and then you can link them. When they're linked, it's easy to switch back and forth. So now that you have your, um, your personal account, the first part of it is the same. You can register a drone, you can view different drones you have, but on this one, what you can do is where you can, that's where you take your exam. So you can do a, um, you know, take your exams for your basics, your advanced and your uh, flight reviewer license. It's all here, you can review your certificates you have and you can download them, that's where you find them. And you can also view your results on how you did on the site, on the tests. It, does, it doesn't break it down to where you did good and bad, it just tells you what your score was. And then you can also uh, become a flight reviewer. So flight reviewer, you have to have test, and then uh, that'll get you to be uh, accredited as a flight reviewer, but you're not gonna be an actual um, a flight reviewer, like they won't check it off in your, um, in your certification until you belong to a school. So even though you can pass the test for flight reviewer, you're not gonna be able to do any flight reviewing until you're part of a school. So if you do have that, a lot of schools have more than one flight reviewer with them, mostly because, well, if you're busy, it's easier to have multiple reviewers, but also is at its location also. So if you live one part of the city or the area you're in, and the one is this flight reviewing, the school might actually get you to be one of their reviewers. So like that, if anybody in the area wants to get an advanced license, they can send them to you to do the reviewing for you. So that's how that works. Um, and then, so to register a drone, there's three, three, there's two options, actually, to register a drone. Um, um, the first option gives you two more options into it and then the second option it's pretty much pretty straightforward so when you click on a link the first thing you're gonna get is a uh, they'll tell you how much it costs to uh, register a drone tells you what the criteria is you have to meet to have your drone to be registered so it's pretty simple you have to be between 250 250 grams and up to 25 kilograms to register a drone with transport canada if it's smaller you're not gonna be able to register it. It's actually gonna give you a um, warning message that says your drone is under the limit, doesn't need to be registered, different rules. Uh, but now if you're over 25, uh, you're gonna need SFO seasons more than just uh, a simple registration. So this one is how to register a drone on uh, this video on between 250 grams and 25 kilos. So you go begin registration, uh, it's five bucks per drone. And then when you get there, there's two kinds of registrations you can do. First one is the most common one, is the drone was purchased. 
new or used or has a associated safety assurance declaration. So I'm going to go over that in a little bit on safety. I declare, no, I, well, I'm not going to go over how to declare a drone, just why you need one. Uh, I'll make a separate video on how to actually make your drone, um, to make a declaration on your drone in a different video. So the first option, you get to purchase a drone. So let's say we had Black Friday not too long ago. You purchase yourself a new DJI drone and you're going to register it. So the way it works is on the first option, you get to choose. You have to select when you bought it. So and it says here, if you're not sure of the exact date, uh, provide your best guess. So for, let's say, for example, we did it on December 1st is when you bought it. Um, what you do then, all you have to do is press continue. Now it does have a box here and it says if there is an existing Transport Canada registration number associated with a drone to put it in here. So the only way you have that is that if you're buying a used drone that was previously registered, you actually can um, take the number and it should be on the drone because the regulation says that when you, have a, when you register a drone, you have to have it on the drone. So it should be on a drone. So that's where you put it. Uh, there's a thing to be done when you buy a used drone is make sure that whoever you buy it from, they go into their system and then uh, I'll show you how to do it in a little bit. And they actually put their drone as sold. So like that, it makes sense. And when you register it, then you're the next person to buy it. Uh, I don't know. And one thing I don't know is that if someone did not put it as sold and you put the number in there, I don't know if there'll be any conflict or anything, but uh, that's would be the proper way of doing it is that they put their as sold. So now when you have a used drone, you can register it as your own. And all you do is you press continue. So I'll go back after on uh, custom built drones. That's usually like for like FPV drones and stuff. Or if you built your own custom beast of a drone. So on this one, uh, what you do, there's two options within this one. The first one, you select what it is. So like for example, you bought yourself a DJI. It's the most common drone people buy. So what you do is you can, you punch in, the letters and we're going to put DJI and it'll come up with everything. So side note, uh, when you put in patching DJI, you're going to see this company show up with this compliance for this kind of DJI drones. That's not the ones you want unless you bought one of their drones. So their drones from what I understand, they're allowed to, they, they have a parachute system so they can fly over people and you can buy it and it's already in the system. So you don't have to do any, a declaration on them, but you're going to go down and let's say you bought a um, DJI Mavic 3. You probably got the Aveda. Everyone's buying that one lately. But let's say you got a Mavic 3. So you put put that in there. And then uh, what it does is that the second option is that if you cannot find the model that's in there, you can click the maker model is not listed. And then if you click that, so I'll click it quickly to show you. You actually have to put in all the information you know about the drone and the serial number. So we're going to go back to um, the one that is listed. So let's say we we'll go back to DJI. Do the quick search again. There we go. Uh, what does it say? Mavic 3. Perfect. So you put in a serial number. Uh, since I don't have a drone I'm registering right now, I'll just make one up. And then uh, you can actually give it a name. And that's very convenient. I recommend you do that because if you have multiple of the same drones, you want to be able to see which one is what. So uh, when I first started out, I had three Mavic Pros. And so it was easy to either put like Mavic Pro 1, 2, and 3 or give it a name if you want to easier for registration purpose. And so you give it a name, we're just going to give this one drone just because I work with DJI Mavic 3 there. Oops. So that's it. And then from there on, when you press continue, it's going to take you to the page on um, how on uh, the payment page. So here I'll tell you how much it'll cost, uh, how you can pay for it. And make sure you got all of the information proper in there on the drone you're registering. And then you have to check off the box saying I verified the information is correct. So I'm not going to go through with it because this is not an actual drone. But that is how you register a drone that's pretty much out of the box. So I'm going to go back now to go over if you happen to have a different drone. So if you buy drones from the store and then you, it's in a system, in their system, you can just register it. If it's not, you have to add what, what it is. Or you can choose a uh, the drone was built using a, it either a kit off the shelves or custom built parts. So that's applicable for if you build your own drone. Uh, most people that would use that usually do FPV work, but it doesn't have to be. You can build your own quad copter drone that's uh, traditional. And then you choose. You have to tell them what it is. So for example, if you do FPV, 
uh, you put rot rotary wing, that's what they fall under. You have different ones, fixed wings, hybrid, lighter than air, and rotary. And then you have to choose uh, your takeoff weight. So here's the part. So we would choose between 250 grams up to and including 25 kilograms because that's usually what you would do because you cannot register a drone that's under 250. And if we try, I'll try it right now, put less than 250 and we're going to call it, I don't know, Cine Whoop. Cine Whoop. If you press continue, it's actually going to give us a warning saying that um, um, the drone does not need to be registered. It says, uh, attention, drone weighing less than 250 grams does not need to be registered. So you can't proceed with it. So we're going to go with a, um, what you would most people would choose is uh, the one that falls in between 250 grams and 25 kilograms. So now we're going to change this. I don't know. Last time I registered a 7 inch. Oops, I'm going to put 7 inch FPV. Perfect. So now that you have that, you, same thing as before, you press continue and then you get, um, you have to make sure all the information is correct. So now that you double check that, you have to ch check off that you verify that the information is proper and then you pay for the registration. Now there's a thing about a custom boat drone is that it will not have a um, assurance declaration attached to it because right now they don't know what your drone is capable of. So that means that you can still fly a drone that you build yourself and that does not have a declaration. But what happens is that um, you won't be able to fly it near people and you won't be able to fly it uh, in control space. And the third one is you won't be able to fly it over people. So plus, if you're doing FPV, the things about FPV is that uh, in the regulations that if you use an FPV, a first person view device, you have to have a visual observer. So uh, the reason I'm mentioning all this is because people always say that they think that it's illegal to fly an FPV drone. So not everyone, but I've had that question quite a bit. People are asking me, it's like, well, is it illegal? And no. So the way to make it legal to fly FPV is you have to register a drone just like we did that. And then you have to um, make sure you have a visual observer. And so as long as you fly away from people, and then which is 100 feet or more, about 30 meters or more, and then you have a visual observer. So if you find an open field and then uh, you go with friends to fly FPV drones, you're not breaking any rules because you're not always all flying at once. There was someone staring at you, you know, see if you crash or not. And then um, now if you do do that, make sure that wherever you're flying, you get some kind of permission on uh, if you're flying on someone's property. But yeah, so you can legally fly an FPV drone and have it registered in Canada. Um, I recommend you do that, especially if you do work with it. My FPV drones, I all uh, registered as long as all the ones that are over um, 250 grams, and then they're all insured. Even the ones that are under 250 grams, I insure them. So like that, um, cover it with any kind of liability. And that's the way I run it for business, is that um, everything is registered and insured. So now you're good to go. And the good thing about registering the drone is that uh, uh, you get your registration. You have to stick it on a drone somewhere. Uh, on a traditional drones, I usually put it on the arm, on the actual hull of the drone. On the FPV drones, since usually they don't have much of a hull, since it's a frame with all the guts visible in it, uh, I usually stick it either on top or underneath one of the arms. Uh, usually underneath, on top, you get your motor wires. But... Um, and so that's how you get to do it. Then you get to do it all over again when you go onto the Knife Canada app, which I'll make a separate video on how to register drones and get approval on the Knife Canada app. And I'm also going to have another video on um, how to do a declaration on your drone. So if you build your own drone, but it actually meets the criteria so it can fly near people and in control space, uh, you can actually submit paperwork to the government for them to allow you to fly that drone within the, those environments. So I'm going to make a separate video for that. Uh, and then a lot of my videos you can find on Patreon and that helps me be able to put out more content this way and also on Teachable. Teachable has uh, courses and I have more in-depth courses in Teachable on uh, when it comes to drones and how to work with drones. So um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do have any questions about what you see, please write in the comments. You can reach out to me through the comments. Uh, I am on uh, Discord. You can reach out to me there. And then, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to see what you guys have to say.